uh, actually, no, not just my company. How is Egypt is going to, I mean, is benefiting from the QIZ? Uh, we get to ask uh, uh, one question before we ask this question. How it would be the Egypt garment exports without obtaining the QIZ? Uh, because if you go back to January 2005, uh, when the quota was lifted from the world, you know, uh, and if you're going to go through some figures like the exports of a countries like China, India, I mean China precisely, the exports of China increased by 500% from December 2004 to January 2005. So without getting the QIZ 14th December 2004, I would say half of the industry, of the export industry in Egypt would collapse. Uh, 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 the second point, actually, you know, is what QIZ is bringing to us, to me personally and as well to the industry. You know. First of all, there was some names which was completely neglecting Egypt. They didn't know even that there is an, such industry in Egypt. The promotion of the QIZ uh, opened chance, chances, opportunities for such names to come and to source from Egypt. Uh, existing names, of course, you know, they uh, pushed up their activities out of Egypt, their sourcing out of Egypt. Uh, QIZ is giving us a hell of potential because customs duty to the garment uh, uh, to the USA starts from 16% up to 36%. But the area of 30% and more, it is the new technology in fabrics like synthetics, like the man-made fiber. This area was completely unknown in Egypt. It was neglected in Egypt, you know. That technology was not for Egypt, you know. But actually, this is also opening our eyes. Uh, to, to go ahead for such technology to benefit out of the high customs duty. Uh, actually, as well, the influence of the QIZ, not just to the American market, you know, the influence to Europe was also positive, you know, because we received some names, some brand names, because of the effect of the QIZ. They decided to come and to source from Egypt, you know, based to the promotion QIZ did. So I would say QIZ was very essential and very helpful for this country, you know, and for me precisely. QIZ, it's an uh, agreement between three countries, United States, Egypt, and Israel. And uh, it's allowing uh, 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 Egyptian products, generally not just textile, to get to the American market with zero customs duty. Uh, of course, you know, under some restrictions that we have certain percentage uh, out of our raw material from Israel. The start was 11.7% of our raw material. We had to get it from Israel. Then it was reduced last year to 10.5%. Uh, this is a good question, you know, because once there was a lot of uh, promotion against, you know, the agreement and one of the promotion that uh, Israel has not enough uh, materials or the uh, price of the Israeli components. But I would say we found out that some components are quite reasonable and attractive in Israel, such as chemicals, you know. Uh, they have as well some raw materials for packaging materials, you know. Uh, they have some accessories, you know, which is quite as well reasonable over there. And some kind of fabrics who is not produced in Egypt. So I would, so I would say those are the major four items whom uh, we concentrate of having such items. Agreement was quite also realistic uh, uh, between the three countries. And I, I would say either both countries, you know, United States and Israel, they were kind enough to accept, you know, the terms of the Egyptian were pushing to have. Uh, which means, you know, that uh, we don't have to limit a specific product to a specific order from Israel uh, to use it in the QIZ. That means we are free to use any materials related to the textile. So this gives us a hell of flexibility to move within the Israeli components. You know. So till now, you know, we don't have serious problem either for obtaining the Israeli components or from the price of the Israeli components. Uh, definitely yes, because it allow you at least it, it, it save you know you between 16 to 30 percent uh, uh, of your cost. So this is giving us a hell of potential against countries like India, like China, like uh, Bangladesh. Such countries they don't have QIZ, you know. So QIZ, I would say, is giving us a hell of potential. Even I would say, you know, that till now, you know, I mean, uh, it's unfair uh, the figures we are getting out of the QIZ. We we, we should use it more and more. I mean. Uh, we should a bit accelerate to get more benefit out, out of the QIZ. I'm, I'm not happy with, the, with our acceleration, you know, uh, and the figures we have right now, you know, I mean, after three years, if I'm gonna evaluate the QIZ, it's quite successful, it's quite positive, but I'm not happy with, the, uh, with our figures, you know, our total exports out of the QIZ. 
Definitely, yes. Uh, nowadays, uh, our figures out of QIZ, it's close to $750 million dollar a year. This is nothing. I mean, if I, I look at Egypt uh, qualifications and possibilities, and if I, uh, I, I go through the benefits we are getting from the QIZ, I would say Egypt has to ship at least $3 billion. And this target, you know, we had and we have to work out of it, you know. Actually, we are a 100% vertical company. You know. We start our production from uh, getting the yarn, uh, knitting our yarn, transferring it to fabric, uh, dyeing our yarn. We have our own dye house. We have our own uh, sewing and finishing, including our own print house, our own embroidery. Uh, so we are a 100% vertical operation. You know. uh, we have right now, you know, uh, 3,350 workers. Within two months, as we have a new extension, uh, we are going to reach 5,000 workers. And I have to say, you know, the day QIZ was signed, this factory had 1,650 workers. So if we wouldn't see a potential out of the QIZ, we wouldn't have such growth and such investment. Oh, uh, good question. <laughs> uh, if you ask me professionally, you know, till now, I don't see any impact, honestly, you know. And this is against uh, a lot of people, you know, they have different opinions. But, uh, uh, the good ones, they don't have any influence. Egypt, till now, they are consuming, or we are consuming uh, uh, close to 1% out of the global textile trade worldwide, which close to uh, $250 billion. So our total exports out of textiles, either, you know, ready-made garment or uh, home textile or yarn, it's not even uh, getting close to $2.5 billion. So that means, you know, it's so easy to protect such 1% of the global uh, world textile trading, even you know our exports to the states. You know, as I said, as I mentioned, you know we are in the area of 750 million dollar. If you go through the the total exports of the American market, which is close to 100 billion dollar, so even we are not even one percent. You know, so this gives us potential. You know, of course, to keep this one percent and even to get more because Egypt has a hell of possibilities not exists anywhere else. Uh, we are, I mean, our geographic uh, location is quite attractive, you know. Uh, we can get in either to American market or to Europe within almost one third of the time a country is in the, in the Far East needs it. Uh, we still have uh, a quite reasonable low wages uh, comparison with the whole world. We still have a low cost utilities. So the production cost in Egypt and the wages and the labor cost and the location allow us nowadays within the worldwide crisis, you know, crisis, is to obtain more markets and more customers. But of course, we have to work hard. And this is the message now, you know, I, I personally address it, you know, to, I, every day to the government, to the media, everywhere, that this is our potential. In spite of everybody's crying and everybody's suffering, you know. But I would say nowadays, this is our potential to benefit out of it. But direct influence till now, we don't feel it. Actually, uh, 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 for the time being, uh, for the last three years, I moved a bit because I was 80% United States. Uh, I produce now 35,000 pieces a day, and it's going to be 50,000 pieces a day within two months, as you know. 60% uh, of my production goes to Europe, 40% goes to the States. But uh, three months ago, we changed a bit our policy that we are going to try to go 50% States, 50% Europe. Uh, we have major customers, traditional customers, you know, uh, I mean, uh, Shall I mention the names or not? You know, uh, it's of course at top of our list is Macy's. Uh, we run supply. I mean, we are supplying to Macy's for the last 15 years, and uh, I'm proud to uh, to say that we are the only country in the Middle East who is obtaining for eight continuous years the five stars award from Macy's, and this is a lot. You know, uh, we have Liz Claiborne. Uh, we did produce to Liz Claiborne. We produce to Gap. Uh, we uh, had a long production but uh, stopped recently for some uh, restructuring, you know, of their sourcing for American Eagle, uh, home health in the States. We had also to supply to Tommy Helfiger, uh, but not anymore for the last three, four years. Uh, <laughs> we do have Capillas, uh, lately they are coming to us. We are about to start with, to start with Colombia. So as I mentioned, you know, uh, Calvin Klein, we have a big program now running with Calvin Klein. So from such names, you feel that we are almost, you know, uh, with the crane of the sportswear industry, I mean, uh, department stores in the States. You know. And as I said, our intention is to, to, to push up our market share with the States.
uh, I mean, it's not a specific product because we have thousands of items, but actually our concentration is the net wear area. Net wear area, it uh, consists of children wear, women's wear, men's wear, all what coming out of nets, like t-shirts, like sweatshirts, like underwear, uh, training suits. But actually, you know, if you go through our styles, you know, because Carrot Cotton Center, it's a bit special factory. Uh, we don't go for the very basic products, you know. We concentrate on the complicated items, or 75% of our production on uh, complicated fashion items. Uh, but actually, we have thousands of, uh, of products, you know, of styles. Of course, I cannot name it, you know. Uh, actually, no, there is a hell of ch challenges, you know, I mean, as I said, uh, industry in Egypt, Egypt is a country, is a, is a country of opportunities, you know. Uh, I would say if you do your, I mean, especially in the textile area, I'm so proud with, with, that, with that, what I'm doing. And uh, if you go through my, uh, div our development here, you know, our growth in the company, and uh, as I mentioned, within three years, we came up from 1,650 workers, to now we're approaching 5,000. Uh, I would say Egypt is a country who is having a low cost for production, uh, who is, is located, you know, almost in the middle of the world. Uh, Egypt has agreements with almost half of the world. You know, we have the QIZ, we have the Egyptian-European Partnership, we have the EFTA countries agreement, we have the FTA with Turkey, uh, we have the COMESA with some African countries, we have the Pan-Arab countries. So actually, you know, either for Egyptian, I mean, Egyptian investors or foreign investors, Egypt is, is a kind of a lot of opportunities, you know. Uh, uh, and I would say, you know, someone can make money out of industry in Egypt nowadays. I would say he can't make it anywhere else, you know. The profit margin still in the industry in Egypt, especially if the industry is 100% export oriented, you know. Because from the other side, you take a full support from the government. We have a hell of supports, you know, either, you know, uh, the incentive plans or either, you know, also the full support we get in all our softwares uh, 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 from areas like the IMC, the Industrial Modernization Center, uh, or even the supports you get uh, for promotion, for finance, for uh, logistics. So uh, if you are going to consider all this, you know, I would say Egypt is one of the countries leading, you know, the export countries who are taking care and uh, giving incentives and full support and opening eyes, gates, you know, for their exporters and producers. So it's, uh, it's a hell of a challenge for anyone to come and to produce here. You know. I wouldn't go and produce anywhere else. Yeah, it was, of course, uh, quite essential, you know, uh, because we, we were pushing too much. So. Uh, without the influence of the, of the QIZ, uh, without the influence of the uh, United States and without the decision from the United States to allow the QIZ to go ahead, we wouldn't do it, you know. Uh, I would even remember a story because this is also as long as we talk, I mean, uh, about the United States. Uh, I have to mention for a couple of seconds, you know, uh, a part of our history, which was very essential. The, ex the garment export activities in Egypt actually born uh, early 80s. And uh, the serious development started uh, in the second half of 80s, after 1985. The total exports of Egypt textiles, early 80s, 8081, it was close to 50 million US dollars. Can you imagine, you know? It was consists of some um, cheap fabrics and some yarn. Without the support we are getting from the States, it's not just uh, the QIZ. It, it, it started so far before the QIZ, the marketing the technology, the support, uh, uh, the opening their markets, you know. Uh, uh, last year, Egypt was reaching 2.4 billion US dollar exports, uh, textile exports. 1.3 billion out of them, they are garment, you know, it's garment. So I have to say clearly, you know, without the support we're getting from the States before and within the QIZ and after the QIZ, we wouldn't be able to have such growth, you know. Realistically, you know, we don't see any, any effect. I mean, uh, there was, of course, a lot of media, you know, let's say what we say, such, uh, we call it yellow media, you know, uh, against the agreement. But uh, everybody was with the agreement, you know. And uh, you can feel it yourself. When you get inside such factories, which you have 5,000 workers running, uh, go and ask them, you know. Uh, uh, because, I mean, through our activities with the QIZ, we are normally receiving uh, friends from Israel, either component suppliers. Even before the QIZ, a lot of marketing to the States, it's going jointly, you know, with offices in Israel, you know. 
So definitely, you know, the relation in the textile, it's, it, it goes back years, you know, before the QIZ between Egypt and Israel. And plenty of Israelis, they are coming, they are moving the factory, they are moving with the workers. Even in Egypt here, you know, we have one of the biggest textile factories, it's Delta Textile, Delta Galil. Delta Galil, it's in the free zone in uh, Nasser City in, in, in Heliopolis, you know. Delta, they have close to 4,000 workers. It's a 100% Israeli factory. And actually, you know, 99% uh, uh, of the workers over there, they are Egyptian. And they are very efficient. And Delta is consuming quite a big part out of Egypt, exports out of garment, you know. So realistically, you know, uh, everybody is happy. I mean, nowadays, the situation or the case is economy, you know. Everyone is looking, you know, to improve the economy of his country. Everybody is looking forward to improve the economy of his family, you know. So nobody, I mean, the real, realistic guys, uh, they don't care. Uh, uh, industry or, or economy has no nationality. You know? And I would say this is the message everybody's having here. And they have it by heart. We don't instruct them for them. We don't mention when we receive Israeli visitors, you know. We, didn't, we don't mention that the guys are Israeli or the guys are uh, American. Or, but the guys by heart, they feel that such people, you know, are promoting their factory. Such people, at the end of the day, responsible of having their salaries, you know, their income. They are always welcome out of them.